Welcome back, everyone. It is Sunday sit-down time. Joining me tonight, a familiar face in the Columbia community, Rockbridge Tennis Coast, Ben Lowe. Ben, thanks for taking time on a Sunday night to come out and hang out with us here at ABC 17. <laughs> well, thank you, Natalie, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some, some big news this week, a decision to retire from boys' tennis. Obviously, such an illustrious career here in Columbia in boys' tennis. Kind of take us behind that decision and, you know, what was behind that? A very tough decision probably the toughest decision of my life because I still love coaching high school tennis both boys and girls but it's more a case of after just over 35 years of coaching with my son graduating from Rockbridge High School and he's played on the team the last few years uh, that my wife and I want to start to spend some time out in Arizona in the winter into the spring and and make that lifestyle adjustment um, that was it as much as anything but it was really tough to make that decision and even tougher to act on it. Mm -hmm. You know, what was the conversations like when, when, when you tell the team, you know, that this is going to be my final season, you know, coaching boys tennis? So what was that conversation like with them? Um, difficult for me to say anything about it, but um, at some point you have to. I think I tried to just blend it in with how much we're going to miss the seniors that are graduating. And then I told them that um, not only would it be their last season, but it was going to be mine as well. And uh, I think I, I know many of the uh, guys on the team were aware that it was uh, something that I was thinking about, contemplating with my son graduating and, and with trying to explore different options as far as uh, lifestyle living uh, out in Arizona for a certain part of the year. I mean, I love Columbia and I'm glad to be here and I want to continue to live here. But, well, my wife and I want to start to spend some time doing some other things. So at this stage in my life, I just felt like even though it was a very difficult decision, it would probably be the better decision. So I, I'm doing it with mixed feelings, but I think it's the best way to go. And with the team, uh, they knew I was thinking about it, but I just tried to couple it in with uh, not only are the seniors going to uh, be done after this season, but uh, I'm going to go with them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm curious about the emotion. You know, obviously you put so much into this Columbia tennis community over the years that you've been here. What was the emotion like, you know, in, in that final season, kind of knowing that these are some of the last, right, for boys tennis? Oh, it, it was tough. I, I think more than anything, just embrace it each step of the way and try and stay present focused rather than thinking about the end. Try and stay in the moment and think about what we're doing now and coaching, but also realizing that uh, this is really valuable to me and, and try and try and enjoy the last part of this uh, last season as much as possible too and, and just enjoy it with the guys and um, it, once again I wanted to be about our seniors that were graduating not about me uh, but it was it it was uh, a lot for both of us well I know it's hard to kind of reflect on but when, when you think of 19 consecutive final fours eight titles and obviously this all started at Hickman and then you go over to Rockbridge, you know, what, what would you say maybe you would like your legacy in Columbia boys tennis to be? Obviously it's grown so much from when you first started. That I'm a person that really cares a lot. I care a lot about the kids on the team and that I'm very passionate about what I do and very driven, competitively oriented. And I want uh, the players to buy in and we go on a great journey together each season. And I, I guess the biggest thing would be just to realize how much I care about them and about what we have an opportunity to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm curious, obviously, you've been around this Columbia tennis scene for a while now. How have you seen it grown from, you know, day one when you, when you start coaching to now? How much has this sport grown in Columbia? Well, I, I think it's grown some. I think uh, the sport of tennis has had its ebbs and flows. But, uh, you know, I think there uh, was a decent amount of interest back when I first started. And I think it's grown into more than that now. And I hope it will continue to grow because I think tennis is a great sport. It's a lifetime sport, unlike many sports. Uh, so I think the skills you can learn as a, in middle school, high school, um, and the more you develop a, at those times in your life, the better you're going to be able to enjoy the sport moving forward. And it's a great sport for exercise, for fun, for socialization, and also uh, for competitiveness because you've got to learn to rely on yourself. You can't be subbed out like in some other sports where if you're not doing well, they can put somebody else in. There's nowhere to hide in tennis. So I think that is a tribute to the kids that play competitive tennis that they'll be, be willing to take that on. Well, it might be hard to pinpoint, but do you have a favorite memory over the years or maybe a, a season that kind of sticks out to you over the years? Well, I mean, whenever we won a state championship, I mean, that's 
it's just an amazing experience because I think the more you're willing to put into something, the more gratification you get out of it if, you've been, if you're able to be very successful. So any of those state championship years have been extremely gratifying, and I'm probably us underestimating the feeling it's brought to me and to many others. Um, you know, we've gone to the Final Four 42 times, uh, 21 on the boys' side and 22, 21 on the girls' side. So, I mean, that type of longevity of having that type of success is something that we're real proud of, and, and the kids on the team uh, have really uh, embraced it, and I think it's created uh, great memories. Uh, I think the most amazing dual meet I've been a part of hap actually happened on the girls' side, though, if okay. you t wanted to pick out one. It was back in 1999 when our Rockbridge girls uh, played in the finals against St. Joseph Academy, and um, the other team was up. Um, uh, they had won uh, four of the singles, yeah. so all they needed was one more win, and we had a girl at number six singles, uh, a girl named Erin Doherty, who still lives here in Columbia. She rallied from one set down to win the second set, win the third set, and now we're down four, uh, uh, four. Actually, we're down four one. Now we're down four two, and then we had to sweep all three doubles, and um, we won it seven five in the third, and two of them, and six four in the third, and the other one. It's the greatest comeback in the history of high school athletics, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And Russ Bear, who was around here and covered high school sports for 15 years, said it was the greatest uh, athletic event he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. On the boys' side, I mean, winning that first state championship at Hickman in 1994 was complete euphoria. Mm -hmm. it, it was just an amazing thing and that we lost to the defending state champions, St. Joe Central, up at their place um, earlier in the season. And at the end of the year, we played them for a state championship for them to win it for the second year in a row. And we, we won 5-3. to three, And what a great group of guys and what a highlight. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Rockbridge boys... 2012, we win the state championship for the third year in a row. We, we have a, a player, Ford Zitch, who wins the singles. We win the doubles. We pulled off the trifecta. And then uh, another year, it would be 2019, Rockbridge Boys, we won our fourth state consecutive uh, state championship. So there's so many highlights. Yes. And um, if, if it were not for the effort and commitment of the guys or girls on the team, this would not be possible. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to, for me to really invest my life in it in a big way, which I feel like I have, and I'm very proud of that. But if you don't have enough players willing to commit to it, this can't happen. Mm -hmm. well, there's a lot of history, and you know, we were talking before we sat down a little bit about your coaching philosophy, and one thing that stuck out to me was the why and the how. You know, you mentioned, you know, what's your why and how of the reason you got into this? Well, my, my why is that because I just love going on journeys with kids in a competitive sport environment. That's so stimulating to me. And uh, the how is how we're going to get there is we're going to uh, follow the uh, core values that I've discussed with some teams, boys and girls in the past, and now I've just made them part of uh, our four core values each season. You know, respect is one of them. We're going to have respect both ways and what respect looks like and what that's all about. Teamwork, because once again, they've come into the sport of tennis and they don't, haven't had to value teamwork mm -hmm. like you do in most other sports. So what, what teamwork's all about and how important that is to our process. Um, and then commitment, what commitment really looks like and, and to be able to live it. And then the fourth one is fighting spirit, uh, that you, we want to compete. This is not just a recreational activity. We want to be competitive and, and really dig for it and, and give it our best shot. Well, obviously, you've done a lot for this community. I'm sure all the boys tennis players out there, thank you. I know you're still going to be around. You're going to be coaching girls tennis in yes. the fall, right? You know, yes. so It's not quite over yet. It's not. No, I look forward to it. <laughs> awesome. Well, oh. I appreciate you uh, joining us tonight. It's been a pleasure <laughs> to speak with you. Uh, for the rest of you guys, we'll be, we'll be right back after the break.